Earth's undersea world. The big question: How does the movement of tectonic plates shape and change the sea floor? Imagine that you are dropping down, down, down into the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. The sea water outside the submersal gets darker and darker. Soon, the light fades completely. Outside is a watery world as black as night. Finally, the sub's lights pick up shapes below as the ocean bottom comes into view. You see lumpy hills and looming peaks of dark volcanic rock. Welcome to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. The ridge marks the boundary between several enormous tectonic plates. Portions of these plates form the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Mountains and moving plates. In Chapter Eight, you learned some of the ways Earth's slowly moving tectonic plates build mountains. Over millions of years, their movements have created many mountains and mountain ranges on land. Moving plates also build mountains underwater. In fact, there are more mountains on the sea floor than on all of Earth's continents and islands combined. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge is a long, rugged underwater mountain range. It runs for thousands of miles along the boundary between tectonic plates. That meet in the center of the Atlantic Ocean. The plates are very slowly moving apart at this boundary. Remember Alfred Wegener? Wegener proposed the idea of continental drift in the early 1900s. At the time, though, no one knew of any force powerful enough to move continents around on Earth's surface. The theory of sea floor spreading was a big clue to solving the mystery. Sea floor spreading was one of several key pieces of geological evidence that led to the theory of plate tectonics. Think of the continents as riding on top of the plates. As the plates move, so do the continents. It was the study of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge that first made scientists consider the possibility of sea floor spreading. They concluded that as the sea floor spreads, the continents on either side of the Atlantic are pushed farther apart. Scientists soon discovered that the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is just one of many mid-ocean ridges. These ridges are found in all the world's oceans, wherever tectonic plates are slowly moving apart. Altogether, mid-ocean ridges form a near continuous chain of mountains that wraps around the Earth like the stitching on a baseball, spanning forty thousand three hundred eighty-nine miles. The chain of mid-ocean ridges. Is by far the world's longest mountain range. It is also the most volcanically active. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge is just part of this gigantic underwater mountain chain. Erupting lava has built up high walls of basalt on either side of the rift. The rift itself is nearly as deep as the Grand Canyon. If you travel along the ridge, you'll soon see more than just high walls of dark rock. Mid-ocean ridges form a near continuous chain of underwater mountains. Hydrothermal vents. At first glance, it looks like a fire. Black smoke is billowing up from a spot in the ridge. It's not smoke, though. It's searing hot, dark water gushing out of cracks in the rock. It's a hydrothermal vent. 
Hydrothermal vents are a bit like geysers in Yellowstone National Park. These deep sea geysers are much, much hotter than anything on land. Hydrothermal vents form as seawater sinks down through cracks in the oceanic crust. As it nears the magma lying below the crust, the water is heated to incredibly high temperatures. It can reach an astonishing 750 degrees Fahrenheit. The water is so hot that it dissolves minerals from the surrounding basalt. The minerals become part of the hot liquid, like salt does when it's stirred into a glass of water. At a hydrothermal vent, the superheated, mineral-rich water comes roaring back up through cracks in the crust. It shoots out of the rock with the force of water blasting out of a fire hydrant. When hot vent water meets cold seawater, the dissolved minerals in vent water become solid again. They form tiny particles. The particles make the vent water look like dark smoke. Hunting for hydrothermal vents. How do scientists find hydrothermal vents? They hunt for them from ships at sea. Hot, mineral-rich vent water moves slowly away from hydrothermal vents. It forms a plume or cloud of mineral particles that drifts away from the vent like smoke from a chimney. If the scientists locate a plume, they send down a robot vehicle. When it locates the vent, the robot sends pictures back to the scientists. There is more to hydrothermal vents than clouds of hot black water. Communities of amazing and unusual animals live around many of these deep sea geysers. Red-topped giant tube worms are the largest animals near vents. Some types of giant tube worms can grow as tall as a person. The vents are also home to ghostly white crabs, football-sized clams, and pale blind shrimp. Scientists believe there are tens of thousands of hydrothermal vents along the world's mid-ocean ridges. Scientists, however, have explored only a handful of them. Finding a new one is always exciting. Scientists often discover new types of animals as well. Giant tube worms near a hydrothermal vent in the Pacific Ocean. Seamounts and subduction zones. Seamounts are another type of underwater mountain. Seamounts are underwater volcanoes that come in many shapes and sizes. Some are just a few hundred feet high. Others tower thousands of feet above the seafloor, although their tops are still far beneath the ocean's surface. If a seamount grows high enough to rise above the ocean's surface, it becomes an island. Seamounts can form wherever magma is erupting through the oceanic crust. Many seamounts form alongside mid-ocean ridges or along subduction zones. Finally, seamounts can also form over hot spots far from plate boundaries. The islands that make up the Hawaiian island chain began as seamounts. As you read in Chapter 4, each island formed over a hot spot that underlies the center of the Pacific Plate. As a result of repeated volcanic eruptions, each island began as a small seamount that grew over time. Eventually, its top broke the water's surface, making it an island. Scientists estimate that there are at least 100,000 seamounts over 3,000 feet tall in the world's oceans. 
Since most seamounts are far below the ocean's surface, studying them is a challenge. Scientists have explored a few firsthand, traveling down in submersibles. More often, they send robot vehicles down to do the investigating. Seamount that grew into an island. No two seamounts are exactly alike. Many are teeming with life, even those that are very deep. Water flowing around these deep sea volcanoes brings up nutrients from the ocean bottom. Nutrients fuel the growth of tiny single-celled organisms in the water. These, in turn, become food for larger organisms, including animals that live on and around seamounts. Seamounts are often home to deep sea corals, sponges, brittle stars, crabs, and anemones. Great schools of fish live around seamounts too. Into the trenches, seamounts aren't the only undersea features that form along subduction zones. Where one plate slides under another, the sea floor dips down to create narrow, extremely deep valleys. These ocean trenches are the deepest places on the planet. The Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ocean is the deepest ocean trench. It lies just off the Mariana Islands, east of the Philippines. The Mariana Trench is hundreds of miles long, but just forty-three miles wide. It is like a deep slash in the ocean bottom. The trench's deepest known point is an area called the Challenger Deep. It is thirty-six thousand seventy feet beneath the ocean's surface, which is almost seven miles down. By comparison, the average depth of the ocean is about fourteen thousand feet. Deep sea coral, brittle star. What is it like in the ocean's deepest spot? It is pitch black. The temperature of the water is only a few degrees above freezing. The water pressure is very high, equivalent to having three big SUVs pressing down on every inch of your body. Only three people have traveled to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. More people have landed on the moon. Several robot vehicles have also made the trip. These visits have provided only brief glimpses of this remote and extreme environment. Picard and Walsh in Trieste. As of 2014, people have traveled to the bottom of the Mariana Trench only twice. The first expedition took place in 1960. The explorers were U.S. Navy Lieutenant Don Walsh and Swiss scientist Jacques Picard. Their underwater vehicle was Trieste. It took Trieste almost five hours to descend from the ocean's surface to the bottom of Challenger Deep. Picard and Walsh peered out a small window. Onto a part of the planet that humans had never seen before. In 2012, Canadian filmmaker and ocean explorer James Cameron also made the trip. His vessel, Deep Sea Challenger, was a slim one-person underwater vehicle. Cameron's descent took just over two and a half hours. He did something Walsh and Picard weren't able to do. He filmed the descent and the view he had of the ocean floor at thirty-five thousand seven hundred fifty-six feet.